And my name is Sarah Lake. I'm with the Australian National University and University of Queensland, and I work um, for the NESP Threatened Species Recovery Hub. Well, feral cats in Australia have been really devastating, in particular for Australia's mammals. Um, they do have a big impact on other groups like birds and reptiles, but they're especially potent for our mammals. So just to put that in perspective, we have the worst mammal extinction rate in modern times. We've lost uh, over 30 species. And in about two thirds of those cases, feral cats have been one of the main drivers for the extinction. If we're not willing to lose more species to the impacts of cat predation, we need to get on top of feral cats. So we need to find ways of reducing their impacts. Feral cats are really bad for Australian animals for um, a couple of reasons. I guess the main one is that our fauna hasn't evolved or co-evolved with cats. So um, our species tend not to recognize cats as predators and they don't have the appropriate sort of anti-predator behavior that works for cats. So they're kind of sitting ducks. Um, and then the other feature is that our native species tend to reproduce much more slowly than a feral cat does. So basically the cats can outnumber them very quickly. And so those two things together um, combine to make cats really potent when it comes to predation on native species. So obviously feral cats have a widespread impact across the continent. I guess a lot of people would tend to think that domestic cats don't have an impact because they're being fed. And actually that's not true. They will, even if they've got a full belly, they will still go out and hunt and kill and just not eat what they're killing. And you know, we have a large number of native species that live in and around cities, including some threatened species. So um, domestic cats or pet cats, even though they might be killing at a lower rate than feral cats, because they're living in such high concentrations in our cities and because we still have native species living in and around our cities, their impacts could be quite large. So it's really important that people do manage their pets in a way that protects wildlife from being killed by the pet and incidentally it's also good for the health of your pet because um, cats who are roaming free outside can get quite stressed and quite um, damaged for example in fights with other cats so it's much safer to keep your cat indoors. We definitely need to use a different approach to controlling feral cat impacts um, in the bush versus in and around our cities. Um, for a number of reasons, but one of them is that the control methods that we currently have available to us in many cases are more appropriate for one setting or the other. So whereas we can use um, techniques like shooting or broad scale poison baitings to control cats in the bush, we certainly can't do that around a city. Um, on the other hand, things like cage trapping or different sorts of traps for cats will probably be more effective in a city because these cats are used to human bits of equipment like you know, a cage that wouldn't seem so foreign. Um, the other big difference between those two settings is that uh, the responsible management of pets is really critical in urban settings, but of course it's not relevant in the bush. With feral cats, I guess I've been involved in some really interesting research with the hub. So we've uh, had a couple of projects that have been really collaborative, have involved like 40 different people all combining data sets. Um, and so one of the projects we finished recently, for example, you know, I think there was 42 of us, um, we combined data sets and from that massive data set, we were able to work out an estimate for the total population size of cats in Australia. So that was really fun. And then um, I'm also involved in, in some hub field projects on cats that are really um, important and interesting. So, for example, um, I've got a student called Rosie Willisey who works on Christmas Island. And Christmas Island is one of the five uh, priority islands identified in the government's threatened species strategy. So there's a cat eradication program in place and happening there now. And what they're worried about is that if you get rid of all the cats, then black rats, which are also introduced to Christmas Island, 
might increase because obviously cats use rats. And if the black rats increase, we know that rats can prey upon nests of birds. So if the black rats increase, are we going to be having a perverse um, impact on bird breeding success because of what we did with the cat eradication? So she's working on that. There's probably two key areas of research that we need to focus on in the future. And um, one is finding alternative or better ways of controlling cats, because it's fair to say that we're very poor in general at controlling cats and their impacts. Um, and the second area of research is probably to explore some of the new technologies that are popping up as potential tools now. So things like the CRISPR or gene drive technologies that we might be able to use, at least in some situations, to um, actually eradicate invasive um, species from defined areas.